You know, we've been in this series called Worship is the Rhythm of Life. Um, the first week, Pastor Caleb preached on why we worship matter and why it's important. Why we worship can become an idol, you know, our sports, our job, a boyfriend, girlfriend, anything that we spend that we worship can become an idol. So what we worship matters. Last week, we too, he talked about the power of worship. I mean, one of the points he said, the power of worship gives us the ability to change to do better things. So worship is the rhythm of life. Um, who likes PBJ here? Ooh, yes. yeah. All right, what, what other combo do you like? Everybody. Just peanut butter? Peanut butter. Cereal milk? Listen. Yeah. What? Yeah. Milkshake and fries? Who like milkshake and fries? That's salty, sweet. Okay, I get that. Listen, me, I, I eat cereal every night. It's just a fact. I like Fruity Pebbles because it's the best cereal there is. You know what I mean? Who likes Fruity Pebbles? I'm just saying. I mean, um, um, Lucky Charm is a close second, but I like, um, I like Fruity Pebbles. This is the best thing that goes together. Dallas Cowboys winning championships. You know what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Listen, I got the mic. So, the <laughs> listen. All right, listen, who here likes to go to the party, have a good time? Parties, you go, go to a football game Friday night, baseball game, go to your pep rally, homecoming prom. But this is what I know. What if you go to this event and you're the only one? Yeah, it's, it's probably going to be whack. It's probably not going to be much fun at all. This is one of those. This type of events are meant to do together. They're meant to be um, share a lot with your friends and have a good time. See, when I was growing up, I, I played baseball. Still my favorite sport. It's not my favorite sport to watch. I like to watch football a little better, but I play baseball. And if you play any sport, you know game day is it. There is nothing like game day. I will wake up and be ready. Listen, I'm going to throw myself out there. I will iron my baseball uniform. I'm just saying. Because even though I was going to go play, you still got to look good. So I will iron my baseball uniform. But this is the thing. I was excited to get there. But once I really got there and saw my teammates... Man, my level of excitement went to like a 6 to a 10 because I knew what we were getting ready to do. We were going to have a good time. We were talking about our strategies. This guy has a good curve, so watch out for it, or he has a good fast. But we were talking what we were going to do throughout the game. So my excitement level, the, the, the fact that we were a team and we were going to do something together really got my excitement level up. And when you went to bat, man, that was the best thing. Sometimes I struck out, sometimes I got hit. But especially in baseball, when you go up, you got your team shooting you on. Good or bad, you know, watch the strike, watch the curve, watch the curveball. Regardless what it is, that excitement, that encouragement of doing things together was there. But imagine if I show up to play and it was just me. Again, that much fun. There's no way I can play all nine positions by myself. It wouldn't be much fun. So these things are meant to do together. This is what I'm trying to tell you. We were created to do life together, not to do life Alone. So to now we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the power of worshiping together. That's the same thing when we come to church, man. When we come to church, we create community. We find encouragement, accountability. We kind of build community here. We worship together. We encourage our faith. This is a story in the Bible um, that there was this guy, the super religious. They try to corner Jesus. They try to put Jesus in the corner. They try to ask him questions. Because they were super religious, so they say, they say, Jesus, what are the two greatest commandments? Or what is the greatest commandment you can tell us? And he said, first, love God. You have to love God. Second of all, love your neighbor as yourself. Who here loves their neighbor as themselves? Okay. Depending who you're sitting next to. Okay. But love your neighbor. So that tells me two things, right? That tells me I'm supposed to do life with God, right? And that means I'm supposed to do life with people. So I need to get used to having people around me. In Hebrews 10, 25, he says, Not forsaking our as believers for worship and instruction, as in the habit of some, but encouraging and no more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. 
Listen, I know we have preference. Some of us are introvert, extrovert, some of us are crazy, some of us are loud. And we do attract the people that are like us. But either way, you don't have a choice. You need to go find that group, that people that, that you like to do things together. You know, I need somebody to, to help me along, to pick me up when I'm down, to, to hold me accountable, to motivate me, to laugh with me, right? To share my wins, to share my losses. If I got to cry, I need a shoulder to go to. We need people together. So when we worship together, number one, it gives us strength. In Ecclesiastic 4, 9, 10, he says, it is better to have a partner than to go it alone. Share the work, share the wealth, it one falls down. Tough. Man, imagine this happening, you look up and there's, there's nobody to extend a hand. That's the other thing I love, I love about when I grew up playing sports. You know, especially this happens more in basketball. The guy falls down, you always see a guy running up, reaching their hand and try to pick him up. That's always there to give you a hand. This is story in Nehemiah 4. So the Israelites, they were going back and they, they were going to rebuild the temple wall. And here it says that they started working and then they got discouraged. They got real frustrated because they weren't getting as far as they wanted to. So Nehemiah said, okay, hold up. Time out. This is what we're going to do. We're going to divide two teams. The first team is going to be the watch. You know, I'm going to give you swords. I'm going to give you spears. Everybody comes. You just kind of, you know, cut them up real quick. Don't let them come into the city. And the second half is going to work. You guys are going to, to build up the wall. And then we'll take turns. And then we're going to put you with your homies. That way they encourage you. And then you support each other. Teamwork. It took a leader to say, okay, I know what's going on here. We're getting frustrated. But let's take a moment. Let's divide. Let's work together. Because we can have a lot of people. But if we're not working together, nothing is going to happen. And that's kind of where we come to church. We find strength. Right? They said there's strengths in number. You come to church, you start serving. You'd be like, oh, you serve here too? What are you serving today? You know, I, I'm doing kids ministry, right? Or you ushering or you holding the door. Whatever it is, you kind of start to become strong together. Um, you ever see like a box or something that says like two men carry or two men lift? Man, even the box is telling us, let's do this together. There's safety. You know what I mean? Like, if, you know, if you get in trouble, somebody's going to come jump you. You just come get, you know, your family at church. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're safety. You know, you know what I mean? You heard people say, my people, my tribe, my family of choice. It just creates strength because there's strength in number. This is another story in, in the New Testament that talks about the, the, the guy that was um, disabled. And he was laying down in the mat. And the, his friend said, yo, Jesus is coming. We're going to take you over here. We got to get you over there because he can heal you. What would happen if the, the disabled man would have let his situation dictate his future? Or if he would have said, man, nobody loves me. I'm just going to sit here. I don't want any friends. I want to be alone. I want nobody to talk to me. Jesus would have came and he would have had no idea. So he would have missed out on the miracle if he would have chose to be by himself. But he has the three friends to encourage him, lift them up, and take them over to where Jesus was. So it provides strength. Say strength. strength. Number two, it provides accountability. In James 5, 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another. You fall step, you offenses, and pray for that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, can accomplish much. we put into action a made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Listen, we need somebody that we can talk to. Now, it's up to you how, many, how much details you give them about your business. You know what I mean? You can just tell them a little bit so they can help you along, but it's totally up to you. So find somebody where you can say, listen, I'm struggling with this. I'm going through this at work, at school, I'm home. I'm having this battle. I kind of need you to help me, hold me accountable. But somebody that you can share you wins too. You know what I mean? Because if you know, it's hard to find somebody that can rejoice with you and, and, and um, enjoy the wins with you where you're going through them. You're going to find more people that are going to point at you where you are down than more people that are going to encourage you where you are up. Because this is what I know. Sometimes the enemy comes to disrupt. Right? We're talking about rhythm. Sometimes you got a rhythm in life. You're going. Everything's going. It's good. You're dancing. But you know, if you got a rhythm 
and somebody comes to you and try to, like, do a different beat or something, it's going to throw you off, right? And sometimes they got their own rhythm going on. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just not yours. You know what I mean? You march it to a different beat. You march it to something different. So having people around you that can kind of put you back and say, hey, man, I see you kind of acting a little different. You good? You straight? Hold you accountable whenever you try to God that very little, bring you back on track. He's like, they lift you up, you lift them up. Right. You know, help us get our rhythm back. You know, God, following the Bible here, people, they are kind of the get back on track, if that's the correct word. They'll get you back on track. Yeah. Kind of regroup, get your rhythm back. You know, sometimes you need somebody to, to say, hey, man, I haven't seen you in a while. I haven't seen you out the blend. Are you good? You know how sometimes you get a text from somebody, and you be like, man, I got this text just at the right time. That's God telling them to encourage you and, and hold you accountable. And sometimes you're that person. That's why every time I get a feeling to text somebody, I text them. Sometimes I might not even know what to say. I say, hey, thinking about you. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you're having a good day. So it kind of just holding the accountable where you haven't seen somebody. You started working out. Sometimes you need somebody to say, hey, you went to the gym today? You know what I mean? Why are you eating that? It's like, I thought you were on a diet. Why are you eating fresh fries and milkshake? You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just saying. I, you know what I mean? For breakfast. So, you know, if you're in the team, we need people to, to encourage us when we're down, but also celebrate our wins, 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 wins. So we talked about accountability. Say accountability. The third point is encouragement. First Thessalonians, it says. <laughs> yes, encouragement, man. I need encouragement. Sometimes I need more encouragement than I even realize. Sometimes I tell myself, man, if I can just get to church. If I can just get to church today. So, or sometimes I have a hard time. I, a long day at work, I mean, if I can just get home. See my wife, my kids. I'll be good, but it creates community. You know, I heard this great preacher once talk about peer pressure, right? He said peer pressure can be, it's subjective. It could be good. It could be, I mean, it's neither good or it's neither bad. It's kind of what you make it. So peer pressure can be good. For example, when we do the 21 day Daniel's fast, and we do the 21 days of Devo, be like, yo, you doing the Devo? Where you at? You know, how was it today? What did you read? You start discussing. There's not that good peer pressure because when you start talking about it, nobody wants to feel left out, right? So it's the good feel pressure. They are like, you should do Connect Four. Where are you serving this week? What are you doing? Right? Is that encouragement for you to step out of your comfort zone and do more? You know, we have student volunteers here. Who's a student volunteer here? Right? You have a good time. That's right. Yes, come on. He said you get to be... You get to be a leader amongst your, your peers. So student volunteers, you know, sometimes, let's be honest, you'd be like, man, I don't feel like going to blend today. You need people to be like, yo, are you coming today? Where you at the church, the blend? You know, a lot, we talk a lot here about act your way into a feeling that feel your way into an action. We're not always going to feel like doing things. I'll tell you what, four, four out of the five days of the, of the work, we got to feel like going to work. I prefer to stay home, sleep in. And do nothing. And you can say five out of five, but, you know, I got to give myself credit. So one day out of the week. You know what I mean? We're not meant to, to carry everything on our own. So we did, you know, we did strength, accountability, and we did encouragement. But this is what I know. The people you do it with matters a lot. You want people to give you forward encouragement, good encouragement. You want them to give you good vibes. There's a story about, you know, when a when rocket is launching to it going into space. You have your main rocket and you have rocket boosters on the side, right? It takes off. All of them take off at the same time. The rocket boosters are what it's called. It's called to boost you. And they'll take you to a certain height, to a certain altitude. At one point, those booster rockers, they just fall off. Sometimes I just like people. There's nothing wrong with these people. They're not bad people, but sometimes they're just there to help you Prepare. If you're not careful, this rocket booster could become your safety net. You might feel empty. You might feel lonely. It's like, man, you know, I had this, I had something on my left, I had something on my right, and now I'm kind of going alone. But in reality, you're not. Because first of all, God is always going to be with you, and you are going to the destination where you are meant to be. So what am I trying to tell you? Sometimes some people are there for a season and they leave. 
They helped you to get where you at. But don't look back. Don't look back towards the comfort zone. Don't look back. Man, those people helped me get here, which is cool. But if God has moved you on, you don't really owe them nothing. So don't look back and try to um, let those people hold you back. God will send you the right people. You might say, man, but I feel lonely. But remember, you are going to a certain altitude and a place that they just were meant to go with you. But when you are out of destination, God will put the right people in your life. When you focus on God, when you focus on worship, when I worship, you worship, I can say this, things just don't stay the same. When I put in the work, it's almost by law, good things will happen. Because this is one though, I can only go so far on my own. Listen, I'm pretty dope, right? You, you're supposed to be confident, right? I'm dope. I'm good by myself, but I didn't get to where I'm at by myself. There's a lot of people that helped me get where I'm at today. As good as I think I am, I'm not that good. I need people, I need to surround myself with people that are going to encourage me, help me get to the next step. People that I can bring along with me, that don't celebrate me in every area of my life. When I'm up and I'm down, I need that person to be a constant um, helper when I need. In Proverbs 27, 17, it says, This is the thing. In order for a knife to sharpen another, they need to rub together. Right? It's just like you and I. Sometimes we need people to rub off of. Good vibe, good things, encouragement. If I have one knife in one hand and I don't have a knife in the other, I can't sharpen. I need them both together to rub, to sharpen. I can't do it alone. See, life is almost like halftime. Whether you watch football, basketball, I'm sure I don't watch hockey, but I'm sure hockey has some type of like intermission, soccer, baseball has the seventh inning. It's like halftime, right? First half, you're going through all these things. You might be going through the week. You might be, oh, you might be stressed. You might be riding high. I mean, so high, so sore, you kind of, man, this is good. You're feeling great. Or you might be struggling a little bit. And sometimes that's how a game is going on. You get to have time. It's kind of the part where you get to regroup. It's like you're in the team huddle. You're a team, the people that you do life with, right? And you start to talk. The strength of a team is like, keep going. All our plays are being called right. We executed our plays down to the T. We win and keep the foot on the pedal. Let's keep going. That's the strength. Or you can say, all right, we, we got to fix a few things. And then host accountable. Like, all right, again, you're doing great. Hey, we missed a few plays here and there. Why don't we do this? Why don't we make adjustments? What are we going to do to go back into the second half and be stronger? So it keeps pushing me forward, that encouragement. You get to the half point, it's either I'm riding high, continue to do what I'm doing, or, okay, what do I need to do to change? Why can I adjust? Where do I have to pivot? What place do I have to call different in my life? Who do I have to talk to? Who do I got to call? Who do I got to text? What do I have to let go that was holding me back? That's the halftime. It's kind of like church is the halftime. You come here to regroup. It's like you get to halftime and you say, okay, I got this. And then you, I say, you got this. Then we got this. Let's do this. I got this. You got this. We got this. Let's lose this. Again, church is like that second, second half, like that half second win. I love to watch sports. And I have seen some amazing second quarter comebacks. It's either one team is going to want it more than the other. Sometimes one team is like, oh, we, we good. I'm chilling. It's almost like, well, we're doing good. We're like, I probably don't need God that much. And you have the other team that saying, oh, I'm coming. I'm hungry. I'm coming to get this. Church is that halftime. It's like that second win that we need. Because this is what I know. I want to be part of the team. I don't want to be at church and not experience what God had for me. I don't want to be just sitting on the corner with my teammates and not being involved, not know what's going on. I might ride the bench the whole, the whole season, but if there was a championship, I'm getting a ring. You know what I mean? So you want to win. Even, even, even if you're that student that doesn't do much and, and still gets an A on the, be part of the team. That's what I want to do. But it's up to you to decide. Am I going to take what I learned here today to with me to keep winning the rest of the week? Or am I going to take it?
to just leave it behind. Or I can take it to get my second half of the week turned around. If we all can stand up. This reminds me of when my wife and I and our kids came to Free Life. We were the over church people. I wanted nothing. When I'm telling that I wanted nothing to do with church, that's exactly what I mean. You know, we've been heard by the church, not by God. You know, just, you know, people, people sometimes have the best intention. It just doesn't always work out. When I tell you, I had a concrete wall behind the metal wall, behind the steel wall. I wanted nothing to do. I kind of wanted to stay in my box. I remember we were here for a few weeks or actually a few months. And I knew, I love God. Like I said, we were the cliche, I love God. I just don't want to do nothing with church. And here comes Pastor Scott preaching all this truth. And I'm like, man, this guy. He just kept little by little with his truth, just chipping on my wall. I said, all right, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you, I'm going to give this another chance. Started serving. I actually started serving at the blend a very long time ago. I'm not going to tell you how long because then you're going to think I'm old, which I'm not. But I started serving at the blend a long time ago. I said, man, this is okay. This is good. I can do this. It started to provide me strength, right? I started meeting like-minded people. I said, I, I, I can do this. Right, so I kept going on, started getting more involved, and then it provided some accountability for my life. Because even though I was doing good in my mind, I'm like, man, I don't want to get hurt again. This is really what I want to do. I kind of don't want to get too involved. I don't want to get too deep. If people, again, was like, hey, man, you coming to Sunday? Hey, you coming to the blend to serve, to help us? It was that accountability that I needed to help me keep going. And then it provided encouragement. I remember when we first moved here, I was unemployed for like 14 months. That's tough, y'all. I love my in-laws, but we were living with my in-laws with the two kids in a small apartment. So I'm like, God, I need something. I wanted to give up. And because I decided to get involved and continue, I found that family. I found that community here at church, that people to encourage me. When they say, Ramon, we're praying for you. I felt that. I knew they were being genuine. So being involved, getting to church, decided, okay, I'm going to do this thing, God, that you have called me to do. It worked out for me. And the rest has been history. So this is what I'm asking you. What are you going to do with the second half? Right now, we're just going to put it simple. What are you going to do with the second half of your week? Are you going to continue to keep winning? Are you going to continue to keep the foot on the pedal? Are you going to let it off? If you have, if you have not had a great week, are you going to pivot? Are you going to take what you learned today and continue what God has for you? This is why I know everything starts with God, your relationship with God through Jesus. And this book right here, Pastor Keller mentions this pretty much almost every week. This here is the guide to life. We might not understand everything that says here. We might not even understand, you know, we might not even like everything he says because it will challenge you. It's supposed to challenge you. And let me say this, you're not supposed to like everything that he's telling you to do. But remember, where am I trying to go? What am I trying to do? And if you follow this, you continue to stay constant with God. You will find that strength, that accountability, and that encouragement. Let's pray. God, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to be here, Lord. Lord, I pray for every leader, every student in this room, whether they need strength, accountability, encouragement, whatever it is that they need, that they know they can find it in you, Lord. Lord, I pray that they take what you spoke to them tonight, not me, what you spoke to them or what you put in their heart, and that they take and it have it an amazing rest of the week, an amazing rest of the month, and they take it just throughout the whole year and the rest of their lives, Lord. We thank you for being here tonight. We love you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord. You know, we pray. Amen.